I know it's late again. <laughs> I wind down and then I get in the mood to work on my journals. I try to work on them at least a little bit each day. Depends. I have so many don't go in at the same time. I'm talking about my personal journals. So I thought, well, I keep yakking about this journal I want to make. So I might as well just. Just throw the gauntlet down and go for it. I don't know why I've been hesitating. I think it was sort of like I didn't know where to begin. I had the concept, but I just didn't know where to begin. So I thought, you know what? Just make the cover to the journal. And once you do that, I think things will start flowing. Anyway, I'm hoping. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. You guys are all the night owls. That's why you show up for me. I'm the same way. I get like a like a second wind. Um, I mean, my whole life I've been like that. Um, and, you know, I'll start cooking or baking or doing laundry, you know, at 10 o'clock at night. I get a boost of energy. Okay, so let's get this done now. <laughs> okay, so for those of you... Um, that have um, been in some of my live streams. I keep talking about this journal that I want to start. And it's, um, you know, called um, When I Used to Be a Mexican. And as the journal goes along, um, I'm going to take you on a little journey <laughs> of, um, I guess, just thought. I, I, that's why I haven't done this yet because I really don't know how I'm doing this. But basically, it's a story of myself <clears throat> and how it relates to the words that we attach to ourselves, whether they are labels that other people put on us or labels that we put on ourselves, but how they um, form the way that we think about things either in a lighthearted way or a serious way or even in a psychological way, how words impact us. You know, simple things like if you have teachers that are, you know, always calling you silly or stupid or dumb or, you know, why can't you get that? Or, you know, it it's just wears down on your self-esteem. So you take that a step further to your basic identity in the world. Now, if I offend anybody, it's not, not my intention. I'm just sharing my truth. It may not be your truth, but it's my truth. And um, there are people um, who have... Um, been molded into thinking a certain way based on their ethnic background. And it's not based necessarily on what they are raised to think or believe. It's what outside people make them think or believe. And that's what that's been true in my case. So I'm only going to be speaking for me. But I know through my relationships with other people that if they were sitting right here with me, they would concur that that is a true statement for them also. So it's not just me. But, for instance, when I was young, um, I was, well, let me, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. <laughs> getting ahead of myself I think <laughs> um, I was raised um, in a household where we all identified ourselves 
as Mexican Americans. I was born in California. And in California, when I was born, um, during that period of time, if you were not lily white, and if you were not black, and if you were not Asian, the assumption was always made by other people that you had to be Mexican. And I was raised as a Mexican. Flash forward to about, mm, about five years ago when everybody's getting on the kick of doing these DNA tests. And my brother takes the test. And my mom calls me up and says, uh, have you tried one of those tests, Rosemary? And I said, no. And she says, well, your brother took it. And it doesn't show that he's Mexican at all. And I said, mom, who are you fooling around with? <laughs> Although she was raised thinking she was Mexican and my father was raised that he was Mexican. All right. So anyway, turns out, okay, so then my other brother, you know, I don't know what he's thinking. So he wastes his money and he takes the test and his comes back the same as my brother's, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and so my mom says, you need to take your test. I said, why should I have to? Isn't, aren't you my mom? And isn't that my dad? So whatever my brother's came out, that's what I am, right? And she goes, I know, this is so strange, you know. So anyway, so my husband says, just for the heck of it, go ahead and, and take it. You know, I said, okay. So I went ahead and of course, you know, mine was the same as my brother's. So we, we knew we were all legit. <laughs> they knew we were all legit. Anyway, um, so, um, so that started. Um, just a thought process. I mean, it didn't, it, it didn't, you know, it wasn't like my identity was wrapped around any particular thing. And it wasn't like, oh, you know, I had like some kind of a conniption fit. My brothers, on the other hand, I don't know, it seemed funny. It seemed like they, and they handled it differently than I did. I'm not really sure why, but um, they did. Um, I won't get into that because I don't really have the answers for that. But anyway, it didn't really bother me either way. I just thought it was very, very curious that you can be raised um, thinking, you know, you're a certain nationality or maybe it's the same kind of feeling when you find out you're adopted. You know, you have these ideas or what, you know, norms that you take for granted and then you realize, well, wait a minute, you know, I'm not really that person. Am I this person, you know, who am I really related to and all that crazy stuff. I don't mean crazy, crazy. You know what I mean? And um, so I thought in those terms, but it still didn't really bother me. So anyway, several years go by, maybe like two years go by. And I was talking to one of my friends and she asked me, she says, Rosemary, do you think you would have been a different person or gone a different path had you not been raised as a Mexican? And I go, what? And she goes, no, seriously, I'm asking you. I'm asking a very serious question. And the more I thought about it, I thought, well, that is a legit question. Because, again, just like adoption, depending where you are and who raises you, um, there's different studies that, you know, Nature versus, versus nurture. Is that what it is? I forgot. Yes, I think so. Let the nurse answer, CJ. <laughs> and um, so anyway, she put that thought in my head. And it was a fleeting thought. But then later on, I really started thinking about it. And um, I started thinking about different um, incidences in my life that never would have happened were I not a Mexican. Now, those are, are real situations where, yeah, that would have never happened. And the way I reacted or what happened to me or the circumstances surrounding that would have never happened. 
and how much of that particular situation molded who I was. And if I hadn't been perceived as a Mexican, then that incident wouldn't have happened. And however that affected my personality would have never occurred, which meant, you know, I would have been different. So anyway, I thought about it a little bit more. And then I started really started thinking of different instances that, hey, yeah, that did mold my personality. That did mold the way I had a perspective on things, on myself and other people. And so after that, I wanted to kind of like write it down and make like a little journal. But as I've told you before, I don't journal. I don't write things down. <laughs> I just get... I, I can't write. I get like a writer's block. Then I just sit there and nothing happens. So then more recently, I thought, well, you know, I like doing these journals. I like to glue things. Maybe I could find pictures or images or something that would coordinate with the words that, you know, I get blocked when it comes to writing down and create this journal about when I used to be a Mexican. And so that is the premise of this journal, why I'm doing it, what it's about. And um, I read a while back, they did um, different studies on Alzheimer's. And um, through that study, they came to a conclusion that the average adult by the age of 50 only has about um, anywhere from 50 to 70 distinct separate memories. And, um, and that's one of the reasons once you get a certain age, you start repeating all your stories. <laughs> you don't have to have Alzheimer's to do that. I do that all the time. And the reason is that the older you get, the less impact that those particular situations have on you. So you're less likely to remember those. Has nothing to do with your memory and how it impacts your mind and your brain. Because, you know, per, you know, by 50, you know, you're pretty developed, pretty much psychologically, unless, you know, something catastrophic happens to you, you know, you're developed. And so you're going to remember memories that had an effect on you, whether they were good memories or bad memories, they had a particular effect on you. And that effect had something to do with uh, forming uh, parts of your personality. So I am thinking, okay, well, if I only have, you know, 50 to 70 distinct memories, which one of those correlate again to this, what I want to do with this journal, with this journal, and um, I came up with a few already. And I'm sure as I chit chat with you guys over the coming, you know, weeks or months or however long it takes me to do this, I'm sure more things will pop into my brain. Um, at first, I wanted to go kind of like chronological order. But then I thought, oh, you know, I'll be popping back and forth. And I don't know. So I'm not going to make no pros promises on the exact format, only that, you know, it will be relatable stories that had an impact on, um, on me based on others' perceptions of me and therefore, you know, having an influence on me. Okay, so that's kind of the premise. And what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting out um, I have this um, old um, calendar that I had saved, and it's by my favorite artist. I don't even know what year this calendar was. I mean, I've had this for a long, long time. But one of my favorite artists is Diego Rivera. And um, I love, he, well, he had a, a career that spanned like almost like 70 years as an artist. And he had different phases, like a lot of famous artists will have a phase that they go through. And some of his stuff I don't like at all. It's just way too out there and abstract. And he's known worldwide for murals. I'm not really into his murals either because they all have like a message, you know. 
and most of them are harsh messages about work, you know, the working class people and their strives with, you know, um, trying to get equal pay. And so he converted into um, communism during a certain period of time in Mexico. And um, a lot of his murals in Mexico reflect, you know, um, trying to um, gain recognition for the working uh, poor. But then he went into a phase where he started doing art, where he was doing the marketplace. And so my favorite work of his is that when he was drawing these women and men in the marketplace and he was always with either sunflowers or calla lilies. And um, that's the phase of his work that is my favorite. So I decided, well, I, I knew I had, you know, pages to that. Um, calendar somewhere. So I whipped them out, started cutting them up, and those are going to be some of the pictures that I'm going to incorporate, you know, in the journal. And um, and so I'm going to just do the, the cover tonight um, because I need to still think about where I want to start this. And if I kept thinking and thinking and thinking, I'd never do it. So I figured, well, I'll chit chat with you about it, you know, while I'm trying to figure out this cover. And I decided to use this. I got this a couple of years ago on clearance is the Dilutions um, journal. And I like the fact, you know, that it lays flat and, you know, and I'm going to, you know, probably be doing a lot of gluing in here. So I think this will work out really, really good. So, um, so that's why I'm going to use that. So anyway, so that is where I'm coming from. This series um, with this journal, it, it's not going to be for everybody. I understand that. It's really for me and anyone who wants to share it with me. So I'm not doing it for anyone else except for me. And I'm not going to um, um, tiptoe around subjects um, just to... Um, make others feel comfortable this journal is for me so but i appreciate those of you that want to come on the ride with me <laughs> it might get bumpy <laughs> but um we'll have fun because not everything's bad don't get me wrong it's just that i wanted to set out the premise where i'm coming from and why i'm doing it and who knows where we're going to end up. But isn't she cute? I just, you know, look look him up on Pinterest, you know, at some point. And look at all of his beautiful art. And um, some of you probably know who his wife was. Um, let's see, who's who's there? Who's in there? I haven't even looked at the, the feed here. I know you guys, um, you may not know who his wife was, but you know his wife. <laughs> Come on, people, you got to know who his wife is. Think real hard now. See, Patricia knows. Patricia knows. Now, see, I know everybody likes her. I'm not that crazy about her. Her stuff's a little creepy for me. But his stuff was creepy, too, except for this period. This time period where he did the marketplace. He, you know, everything was light and... um to me, positive, and the other stuff is like, I don't know, but, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so, um, so among the uh, journalers, I think his wife is much more um, famous than he is, but I'm more of a fan of his, okay, so, I thought what I'd do, because see, I, I forgot once I decided to use this, I realized I had this goofy thing, you know, and I can't, I don't really want to cut it and take it off. I guess I could, um, but I found a way around that. I decided, you know, I did this picture here so I can glue this down and then it'll be okay for me to wrap that around. And then this one... Um, what did I do? I did something. I can't remember what I did. What did I do? Oh, yeah. I'm going to put her up here like this. And then part of the calla lilies I'll put down here. And then I can close it 
both ways. And um, I think it looked kind of cool. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to say that she's not my favorite. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Diego was very strange. But like I said, this is the only period of his work that I like. <laughs> they both. Um... But, you know, if you go to, let's see, San Francisco, New York. Chicago and some other place in the United States. There's like four or five places where Diego was commissioned to um, um, to do these beautiful murals, and obviously they're still there. Um, but there's there's several cities where you can see all of his murals. Um, some in in you know that are in these large buildings. A few of them, I think the one in San Francisco was out by some mass transit. I forget what it was. And his stuff is still out there, too. But the first time I ever heard his name was, um, I like I said, I used to live in California. And the week before the Rose uh, Parade, they have all the floats already lined up. And there was this, and we would go, you know, you could go there. It was free to go see the the different floats before they went out in the parade the next day. And so, you know, every couple of years we would go out there. And this one year we went out and there was this one float that, I mean, it was just gorgeous. I mean, you just looked at it and it was beautiful. And it was the first time that this one guy had done um, um, the float. Where's my paper? Oh, the first time he had done the floats. And um, and it just happened that he was Mexican and he was telling us about who had and somebody else you know, that knew about art was asking him, oh, you know, I recognize this. I recognize that. You know, who influences you? And he said, Diego Rivera. Now, I was a kid and the only reason I remembered the name was because my grandmother's maiden name was Rivera. And we had a cousin named Diego. So I just naturally remembered the name. And then years and years went by. And then in some magazine, I mean years, like 20, 30 years later, I see in a magazine where they were honoring the guy that did the floats because he became some kind of a, world-renowned guy for float making or something. I don't know. He does them all over the world. And there was a write-up where he was saying that he had been influenced by Diego Rivera. And I go, oh, yeah, that guy that he told us about, you know. I started getting all the little flashbacks and going, oh, how cool. I remember that. And um, so anyway, um, after that, I decided to look him up and I looked him up and I go, Oh wow. I like his art. And then I saw some of the other stuff and I go, yeah, I don't like that stuff. And then a few years later I came across this, um, this calendar and it just happened to be of the period that I like his art. So that's how I ended up with this. But it's funny how things intersect. You know, I was drawn to, and these are the little funny ironies. I mean, you can find irony in anything. So I'm probably stretching it, but that's okay. This is my story. <laughs> but so, so here's the irony, you know, out of all the floats that were there, um, I was drawn to this one float and, you know, who was the designer? A Mexican. And who was his inspiration? A Mexican. So my first appreciation of any form of art was from that man. He, after that, I've never even thought of art. I mean, it just was not in my vocabulary. Of course, I was a little kid, but still, you know, the interest wasn't there at all. And, um, and that's what sparked it. When I saw what he did with those flowers and how intricate. And then he had a sketch of what it, he wanted it to look like. And it looked identical to his sketch. It was just beautiful. And then he showed us 
you know, his portfolio of different things that he had sketched for that particular float. And, you know, he could have been just, you know, an artist that worked on canvas and his stuff was so beautiful, but he chose to work with flowers, you know. So anyway, so I guess that was like my first um, connection without knowing there was a connection <laughs> that later would become an irony of a connection. But well, that's way down the road. There's just too many things to talk about. So we are going to work on the cover. All right. So that. Yeah, see, that'll work like that real cool. Now, this will go here. Yes, that's going to look cute. I think it's going to look cute. Yes, yes, and yes. I had fun today. Okay, let me backtrack. I always get ahead of myself. I have, some of you know, I have a group called um, um, Trashy and Flourish Journals. And we do um, swaps and stuff like that. So, this has been maybe about a year and a half ago, two years, I guess. Maybe a year and a half ago. I was putting some people together on a swap. And I realized that the lady that I was putting on a swap with someone else, because I had to check, you know, if they're in the United States or it's international or whatever. So I just clicked on her name to make sure it was her first swap. I wanted to make sure she was in the United States because I was partnering her up with somebody that wanted just somebody locally. And then I find out that she lives in the town right next to me. She lives literally like five miles from me. And, um, so I contacted her and told her, yeah, do you know that blah, blah, blah? And she goes, no, I didn't know you lived here. And, and so when I had my workshop here in my studio, she came to my workshop. And ever since then, we've become friends. And she comes and to my open studio days that I have here on some Saturdays during, you know, during the month. And um, we have a lot of fun doing stuff together well anyway she came here today we were going to get together tomorrow but we're supposed to have storms tomorrow so i said you know what can you come friday because the weather is going to be yucky on saturday so she came and we had lots of fun there was a few that were going to come but it was a last minute thing they were going to come saturday but like i said we canceled so anyway, so she came over, so just her and me, and we had a hoop together. She's a she's a wild, crazy woman in a good way, <laughs> in a good way. And she brought all her stuff over, and oh my goodness, I'm glad I do stuff here in my studio and don't go anywhere else because the stuff the ladies haul around. I can't believe it. I thought she was going to break her back. And then I had to carry half the stuff in the house into the studio with, you know, help her because she couldn't do it on her own. <laughs> oh, you're watching me from, from Mexico City. Ah. Yes, it is. So you can go down and see all the murals. Have you already seen the murals of his down there? It's beautiful. Well, I don't know how pretty the murals are. I think the murals were more when he they were, you know, getting involved in all these political things with the um, with the workers, and it's pretty intense, but it's still beautiful. Okay, so these are some of my favorite. Um, of course, I do like also the lilies, I think, are my favorite, favorite. All the ones with the lilies. But um, like I say, he's got some really pretty ones with different flowers. These aren't, what are these called? Those are tuberous, tuberous, 
what are those called? I know you flower ladies know what those are. Tuberous rosebud, rose, rose, tu well, something like that. They really smell beautiful. If you have allergies, they'll give you an instant headache. <laughs> so how long are you going to be there, Michelle? Yes, tuberose. That's it. There you go. I love those. They smell so good. Well, that is so cool. I am so jealous. All right. I don't think I need to put any more. I think it'll be too busy if I put any more on the outside. I'll come at back and I'll put a title or I'll stamp or I'll do something. But I wanted to get that basic done just to force myself to get started already. <laughs> Yeah, and then when you look up, um, if you do look up Diego, he influenced a lot of artists because a lot of artists, if we, if you just look at it, you're going to think that it's the their marketplace um, uh, paintings, and you're going to think, oh, that looks like a Diego. Well, you look at it, it's not Diego, um, but he influenced a lot of artists to do that look. Let's see. I have some pieces parts from the other one. Maybe I'll put them here. Here or here. Um, I need to trim it out. Trim it out. All right, now she was she was originally holding up some of these flowers, so her arms are up. So I might have her holding up some of the, um, oh, yeah, look, she's holding up the sun. Oh, see, I'm letting my inner Diego work here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like it. I think it's going to look cute. Let me see. Oh, I know those two rows. They smell so good. Yeah, we're all we're all jealous of you. You need to pick up. Oh, now I'm gonna. I already forgot the name of that paper. Someone might remember. It's this beautiful paper that's made down in Mexico. It's made off of the bark. It's only made in one of the one of the cities. Well, it's known for it. I don't know if they make it anywhere else, but it, the artisans there are known for making it. And it's really beautiful paper. I need to find somebody that I got. I'm sure I've got someone in my group that lives down there. I need to see if they can get us some to play with our journals. The name will come to me. <laughs> Remember, I only have about, if I'm lucky, I have 70 memories. <laughs> oh, dear. Well. But that would be fun for you guys. To start a journal, you know, like a memory journal, and you're going to see, you'll think, oh, I have a lot of memories, but they might be surrounding the same event, you know, the same time period, you know, and you realize there aren't that many that, that you're going to come up with that really don't overlap with the same thing. And you could start your memory journal. That way, when we all get kind of senile, <laughs> We can remind ourselves. <laughs> and I even like that red on there. It goes with the flowers that are down here.
I think I kind of like that. I'm gonna cover up the palm of her hand. I don't want that to stick out too much because it will get all messed up when I open it up. Ah, that's good right there. It's got a flat side, so it's kind of weird. Okay, that's good right there. Now, how am I going to remember where that is? <laughs> okay, Rosemary, now you got yourself in a pickle. Let me see how can I do that. I think what I'll do is my paper. Hi, Julia. Okay, so if I do that. No, that's not going to work either. All right. I'm just going to have to remember that it goes like that. That's all we can do. So what are all you ladies up to? I know you're up to something. Or are you just chilling because it's a Friday night? I bought a whole bunch of avocados yesterday. And they were all bright, bright, bright. So I made a bunch of guacamole today. So now I have a bunch of skin and pits. I'm going to boil them tomorrow and do some dyeing. So my day is planned. As far as my little bit, I have to do something creative every day. So at the very least, tomorrow... It'll be my avocado dime. Boho beads for a swap. Ooh, cool. You know, I have not used azaleas only because I don't have any in my yard. And I don't know anybody well enough to ask if I can go pick up their... <laughs> They're flowers. You know how they all bloom and then they kind of all fall down. But I think they would probably print really, really well. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of the plants, a lot of the flowers, I should say, you know how some flowers, they'll just dry up and, um, you know, turn a darker form of whatever there are. And then there's some flowers that you're going to get this little brown edge around them that almost looks like rust. Usually I have learned through trial and error that those have a lot of pigments inside of the flower and they tend in general to um, die really well. And the azaleas tend to do that, especially those pink ones, the purple ones, even the white ones that'll get that little, you know, brownish, copperish edge to them as they're getting ready to keel over. So if you have some and you want to get into that, I would definitely try it. I have to I have to meet somebody with some plants around town. Say, hey. <laughs> Hey, can I borrow your azalea bush? <laughs> and we have lots of them here. I mean, you know, in the community, they're all over the place. I need to find a business. There you go. I need to find a business that has them. And then conveniently, I'll just go and rub up against them when they're getting ready to fall and grab them all up. There's the plan. Aha. Because my thinking is that they'll work really well. Well, that's not the way I had it planned, but it's going to stay that way because it kind of fits. It fits. And it covers up all the important stuff. 
and doesn't get into the binding back here. So, whoops, I didn't get all the glue. I might have to come back and fine tune this. And I might end up at the end putting a coat of um, some kind of sealer over it all. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I like that. It looks kind of cute. If I don't say so myself. Oh, Jennifer, you're going to start another journal? I got a bunch of uh, plastered cotton that I did a couple of weeks ago. So I'm thinking of making some smaller plaster journals um, to make them a little more affordable, but they'll be, you know, smaller. I don't know if it's smaller page size or fewer pages, but it'll be less so I can make it more affordable for more people. Okay, this is looking good. I like it. Where'd that come from? Oh, and so then what I can do, aha, I have my little leftovers. I don't know when I'm going to use that. And I might be able to use that leaf as something. That's too big to put in there. So I don't really want to fold it because I don't know how I'm going to cut it. So I'll just put this in my other little area where I'm going to keep some stuff. As I come across stuff that I think that I might be able to use in this journal, I have a little envelope that I'm throwing everything in. I should say a, a file folder. And I think that should be pretty good. So then, well, my friend, I think that's it for this tonight because I'm not sure what else I'm, I want to do on this. I just wanted to chit chat about it so you'd know a little bit more where I'm coming from or where I'm going. <laughs> but while my friend was here, where did I do it? Oh, here it is. Um, I worked on my, um, let's see if the camera doesn't go crazy. I worked on my get a spine journal and um, I've done quite a quite a few um, things done here and um, I think it's kind of okay great I'll check that hi Luz yeah I'm gonna put this one will have the replay on here um, because I'm kind of describing what my other journal is going to be about. The other ones, I'm not so sure what I'm going to do with that. Probably not. Um, yeah, I don't know yet. I'm not going to say nothing because I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. <laughs> anyway, so I got quite a few pages. Those of you that don't know about my Get a Spine, I had made this last year. And I just put, um, um, let's see, what did I do? Oh, I... <laughs> I already forgot. Uh, I wanted to put three different spines and create a book like this. And I wanted to dedicate it to predominantly black and white with a little bit of red in it. And so whenever I find something through my magazines and stuff, then, you know, I put it in my little box for my black and white journal. I've been having a lot of fun with this one, too. So, um, Rosemary, I keep getting good in my data. Oh, sorry, Brooke. Well, thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Maybe next time they won't give you the old boot. We look, her legs a little, a little floppy right here. 
Okay. Anyway, so this is another thing I like to do. Um, I like to put journals together that um, have a theme, not necessarily a theme of subject, but a theme of color. So this particular one just happened to be black and white. But for those of you that maybe have shied away from a black and white journal just by virtue that ooh, it might be kind of boring, um, there's so many shades of black and so many shades of white. <laughs> And it all lends to drama. And I think you'd have a lot of fun. If you're not, if you haven't done one, you know, I really think you, you'll have a lot of fun with it. If you've shied away from, you know, black and white, I would really strongly um, suggest you try one. And if it just really drives you crazy, it'll just start adding color to it, you know, but give it a chance because it can really lend to some pretty cool drama. Of course, none of my pages are completely done yet. I always add a little something here, a little something there. Some don't have anything yet. <laughs> but they're getting there. Oh, here's a little thing. I took that out of my other journal and put it in here. I have to finish, finish the installation. <laughs> That happy nail went perfect. This is one of those um, um, jelly plate transfers gone wrong. <laughs> it didn't work. So I tried to wipe it down and a lot of the black stayed on there. And I go, hey, I like how that looks. And I put a little sparkly, some little red sparkles on her shoe just because. Look at those choppers. <laughs> and I'm going to put these here. I thought these old cars would look cute with, he looks like he's like from the, 50s, 60s. I didn't glue those down, but they'll go there. This was drawn by um, Maridel, Mary Atelier. She did that. It's watercolor. And then. Empty. <laughs> I've got this thing. Well, that's another journal I'm supposed to be started. You remember I told you about the pot heads? We're going to cut out things out of magazines and cut everybody's head off and then put flowers or trees or leaves or something instead of their faces. And so she's like my first pot head. But I'm going to do a whole journal just dedicated to pot heads. So all this still needs a lot of work, obviously. I like her and her fish. I like that. Yeah, my husband found these magazines at the library. They have a table where anything on that table you can take free. And there was like about three or four photograph magazines that looked like from maybe the 70s, maybe even the 60s. So some of these, not all, but some of the photographs in here came from that magazine. Now, I, some of you may have seen that fabric tape I made. And uh, one of the pieces I put in there were these bugs. So I cut out some of the pieces from the fabric tape. Those are little ants. So I put them in the flower. 
And then the way she was dancing, it almost looked like, you know, she was dancing over a bunch of bugs. So I put some more bugs there. <laughs> you know me and the bugs. And they were red backgrounds. So it worked perfect. So anyway, if you haven't thought of doing, you know, the old black and white, I would suggest trying it out because it's a lot of fun. Then, um, one thing I did is my, I have some doilies. Those of you that go to um, Brooks Sale, you know, I like to snatch up doilies. And then I scanned some of them. And printed them out, and I think they came out kind of cool. I don't know if it's gonna sh they're gonna show up cool in the monitor or not, but here in real life land, <laughs> they came out kind of cool. <gasps> So you could um, get a pencil and do your slow stitching. <laughs> you won't even have to have needle and thread. Just me, 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 me. <laughs> with your marker. <laughs> Talk about cheating. <sighs> so wouldn't these look cool in a journal? I think they would. I think it would look super, super duper cool. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, my knee's been killing me all day. The weather's been changing, and, you know, you don't want to talk about that weather thing. Then I used, I'm making, um, let me show you real quick so you get some ideas of what to do if you're doing that fabric tape that we were playing around with the other day. I'm making a few, um, a few journals, you know, like nature type journals. And um, so I was trying to think because I made the, the covers myself and I had to cover the spine up with something. And so what I did is I took some greens, earthy colors, and did my strip and put it on the binding. So that might be something you guys might want to think about doing if you are playing around with making the, um, you know, those fabric, that fabric tape. Just a suggestion. Sometimes you make things and then we go, what are we going to do with that? It makes a cool, a cool trim. Now, um, when my friend Sarah was here, I was telling her this new tape that I told you guys, it's not as strong as the original one. I mean, it still works in good. It's, you know, this one is that one right here. But that first one I got that I can't get anymore, um, it was specifically for fabric. And this is like for everything, you know, carpet and all kinds of stuff. That other one um, said that you could even put that tape on walls and put fabric on walls. So, you know, it stuck really, really well. Um, but this this will work. It still works. And, you know, um, probably really any brand, as long as it's not that thick stuff, as long as you make sure it's thin or else it gets all mushy. And if you do buy it, don't forget, put a piece of fabric before you cut or else the the sticky tape just is all over your scissors and everything is a big mess. But if you put... Um, a piece of cloth. I mean, if that's what you're making, 
um, put a piece of cloth there and cut it. If you're doing it with paper, put the piece of paper and then cut it. And that way you have it all ready to go. And this, and you can find it real quick too. So make sure you do that before you ruin all of your scissors. <laughs> it would be, uh, yeah, not too good. Also, I got a hold. I'm going to put them probably in my shop. I got a hold of a whole bunch of old canceled checks. They are so cool. I'll show them to you really quick. I haven't sorted them out or anything, but um, I think they came out so cool with them. Hold on. Where did I put them? Oh, here's some. Look, look how cool. This is from 1936. And what I like more than anything is the back of them. All the stamps all over them and the holes and all that cool stuff. But these are all from the 30s. And from Illinois, Sigler, Illinois. Oh, they don't all have stamps on them. Ooh. The stamps are the cool ones. Look at that. Oh, most of them do. It was just, oh, now see, there I go. There I light again. That one doesn't. So I'll be putting those. Someday soon. <laughs> Someday soon. I like that. They're good for your collaging and, you know, tearing them up, painting them over, whatever it is you do. Everybody does something different, you know. Well, I think that's all I was going to share with you, you guys. I wanted to get that started. I wanted to just kind of brief you let you know what's going on um show you what you can do with your fabric tape let me see what's going on where did i pick those up oh there was a um a gentleman who had a store downtown that had been closed forever i mean i've lived here 10 years i don't remember it ever being open it was in you know just a building that look like it had been abandoned. I mean, I could see through the windows, a lot of stuff in there, but never any activity. And I guess the gentleman died or something and everything inside of that store had to go. And he was a collector of all kinds of paper stuff. And um, most of the stuff, you know, this one guy came in and swooped in and got almost everything. And I just happened to see this small little box over in the corner and looked in it and those checks were in there. And uh, I managed to get them before that guy did because I saw him salivating when I was looking at him. <laughs> I never put them down after I picked them up. Let me tell you because I know he would have grabbed them. <laughs> so it was just by chance. <laughs> I don't usually find cool stuff like this. So when I do, it's like, ah, that I'm not going to let nobody else get a hold of it. Not if I can help it. I know if I had sat it down just to keep looking at it, he would have grabbed it. He looked like that kind of guy. <laughs> oh. And then, did we come up with a name for him? <laughs> Poor little guy. He's still, he's still nameless. He's not homeless, but he's nameless still. <laughs> He's so cute. Did you guys all get to see him last time? He's a character. Yeah. Oh, no. Patricia remembers him. I don't think I can turn his battery off and on without. <laughs> <laughs> I 
When I used to be a burro, that's who he is. When I used to be a burro. <laughs> Pedro the burro. <laughs> okay. Where's this little switch? I can't find his switch. Oh, I'm going to have to unzip him to do his switch. How rude. Okay. Oh, and his battery's kind of, okay, let's see. Forgot. He imitates everything I say. <laughs> Hola. Hola. Burrito. <laughs> Don't talk back. No. No. No, no. <laughs> he doesn't mind. <laughs> and then he has, I haven't figured it out yet. On his little, oh, 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 stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh, gosh. On his feet. <laughs> There's a little switch here. And a switch here. And he didn't come with. And he didn't come with instructions. So I'm not too sure what it all does. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not African, you're Mexican. Exhausting. <laughs> anyway, he's very exhausting. Oh, and I can't figure out how to turn him off until, unless I turn off his battery. Oh my gosh. Anyway. <laughs> At least, un, unlike your children or grandchildren, I can just flip a switch and turn him off. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. He could. Yeah, he could really go. He can get down with the best, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, he's fun. He's cute. And uh, um, I haven't come up with a name for him yet. Well, everybody's giving me different suggestions. And I think he's he's kind of cute without a name so far. Ear hair. <laughs> Do you know my husband? <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Where did I get him? Actually, I got him on Amazon. You know how sometimes you're um, shopping and then they, 
they've run a little something up there thinking you might be interested. I don't know why they thought I'd be interested because um, I don't buy toys. I've never bought toys on Amazon, so I'm not like on their toy list. Um, but he just tickled me. And um, I mean, just by his looks, I didn't even I mean, I knew he had said that he talked, but I didn't know all the shenanigans, you know, he got he would get into. Um, but he just looked cute and he looked like a little stinker. And <laughs> but the world, I have a dog named Busta. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it, he's just cute. And different companies have different ones. So the price range, they run anywhere from $8 to like $20. So I didn't know if, you know, if I was going to like him or not. So I just got the cheap one. I think he was like, you know, like nine, eight, eight and change, you know, $9 with tax, probably nine something. He was under $10. Let's put it that way. And there's some that cost twice as much. Maybe the recording quality, maybe is better and the more expensive one. And, and it's not so garbled, but Hey, I don't want him repeating me any better than he already does. So the $10 one is just fine for me. And I put him on the floor with my dog. Oh, my goodness. The dog was getting hysterical because he would bark at the little guy. And the, gat, the guy would come to try to attack him and bark at him. And then my dog would circle him. And then he's circling and barking. Oh, my goodness. It was just too hysterical. I was laughing too much to film it. So <laughs> it was really cute. So yeah, Amazon. Um, I don't remember the name of, but you know, just put in there, um, <laughs> talking pearl. I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh. And they have different animals. They had a parrot and there was like four or five different animals, but his expression to me was just funny. He's got those crazy looking teeth and those crazy eyeballs and his little ears that stuck up. And um, so I just thought he was cute. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, <laughs> speaking, talk, talky. Oh, gosh, he's so cute. Anyway. Okay, ladies, thank you for keeping me company. Unless you have any questions. Yeah, well, I didn't want to torture him too much because I didn't think that he would survive. See, I have two Rottweilers and a German Shepherd and a mutt. And the German Shepherd, um, I think, just wanted to grab him by the neck and end the whole thing. And um, the Rottweilers just kept barking at him like, shut up, shut up. The one female Rottweiler, she thinks she's the boss of everything. And she kind of controls everybody. So when she couldn't control him, you know, she was about ready to, you know, show him who was boss. <laughs> yeah, little puppies, I'm sure. With, I mean, if they don't have any company, this is perfect company. It may make him a little neurotic. But, <laughs> but at least they would have somebody to talk to while, while the owners are at work or something. <laughs> No, I don't know. Chewy toy. I don't think so. It's got batteries in there. <laughs> batteries and zippers. Keep out of the keep out of the dog's mouth for sure. And some kind of metal things down here. Well, it's plastic down here. All right, ladies. Have fun. If you are in the area where all the storms are going to be hitting tomorrow in the mid section of the country, stay safe. Um, some of them, they say, are going to um, ca possibly cause um, um, hail, strong hail, strong wind, and um, further south, a uh, possibility of tornadoes. So stay safe. And my area is going to be coming through like about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So stay safe, stay inside, get into your safe spot. And I might have to take Mr. Burrito with me. <laughs> I might have to include him. <laughs> All right, ladies. Again, thank you a lot. And um, I will see you when I see you. If you're new here, 
Um, if you want to catch some more insanity, just go ahead and subscribe. And uh, cause I never know when I'm coming on, I don't have a schedule. So, um, that way you can be notified and you can join, you can join the fun. All right. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye.